I think I'll hand over uh, to Geert. Geert, uh, you're the moderator for tonight. It is, uh, yes, it's with a lot of pleasure uh, because David is an artist which I feel very, very much fond of already, various years, and, I can, and then finally we have the chance to meet, uh, uh, even if it is in an online cafe. But uh, uh, wonderful to have you here, David, and uh, to have you all here uh, tonight. I think we have a very um, a diverse crowd which can. Um, uh, which, which promises an, 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 um, an energetic discussion about performance um, and, um, um, and walking and, and sound. Um, so uh, David is an uh, interdisciplinary artist and, and his, his work focuses on, on the body in relation to um, space and interactions with others. Uh, he uh, uh, works often with uh, sound. And um, his background is a very strong background in, in, in the performative um, uh, arts. And he's uh, now um, uh, doing um, doctoral studies in these in the interdisciplinary methodologies that he's exploring in his work um, in uh, Budapest. Uh, he um, is often appearing in international festivals um, in Europe and, and South America, including the Prague Cordial Festival d'Avion. Uh, in uh, Brussels and Sao Paulo, um, and he will uh, share with us tonight uh, some of his work uh, that brings together social interaction, people uh, being together in public space, interacting together in public space, um, and composing, choreographing uh, with sound um, uh, and walking. Uh, so, um, David, um, I'm very um, curious to hear more. Thank you, Hert. Uh, Hert, that's the right way? Hert. Hert, sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Hert. It was, a, it was a really nice introduction, but I, I still would like to give a little context of what I'm doing. Um, so, as uh, Hert uh, explained just before, I define myself an uh, interdisciplinary artist who works with Sound, body, no, well, how do I define myself? Sound, space, and interactions. But there is a very strong element, of course, of uh, movement as well. And um, yeah, it was quite a long road to get to the practice where, where I am now. I started with uh, from music. Actually, I started as a metal guitarist when I was a, a teenager and basically I started to uh, study and go towards composition, sound art and improvisation from when I was 20 and while I was studying sociology. So my first degree is uh, from sociology and uh, during these years I started to also st uh, yeah, study composition, sound art, contemporary composition, improvisation and I also started to work a lot with um, contemporary dancers and started to get to know the contemporary dance field, which was a very big inspiration for me because I quickly found out that this is a very open field in terms of form. That was very inspiring for me that I, I haven't found so much in, in other fields, at least in uh, Hungary. So in, in Hungary, like people who are working with music or or sound or sound art, they are um, in terms of form. It's it's a quite limited practice. It's it's not like in, for example, in the Hague where they have this sonology department and they're doing like a, a very diverse forms with the sound. So then I moved to London and I studied in a Goldsmiths College kind of sound art contemporary composition and there I started to uh, specialize myself more towards framing all my works in terms of uh, spatiality and uh, doing not only site specific works but in every of my work uh, sound and spatiality is, is present and um, yeah, uh, as Hirt said, I'm, I'm a fourth year uh, 
PhD student and my research is the movement of uh, sound and bodies in space and so basically my research is kind of basically is very much based on my practice but the like the body is can be either of the performer's body or it can be the audience's body and the sound what is connecting these bodies and these bodies with the space and in most of my composition as you will hear i'm using very resonant sounds that can be very much uh, felt bodily and um, the movement is also can be by the that the bodies are moving or the bodies are moving sounds or there are static sounds and the bodies are moving in between the static sounds or it can be static sources like multi-channel uh, sound setups and the and the bodies are still and the sounds are moving around but what i'm gonna talk about now is more of my works where it's including uh, walking and um, i'm gonna talk about four piece which is kind of also an evolution in in my uh, artistic language and from piece to piece so the first piece i was doing uh, in this format uh, i i uh, created this piece in 2015 in london in the greenwich food tunnel which is a 440 meters long quite impressive uh, food tunnel which goes under the thames and um yeah i was asked if i want to do a piece there and basically my original idea was that i'm gonna put down eight speakers all of them are playing one continuous tone so it's basically an eight note uh, chord and um, the audience can just walk up and down the tunnel and then depending on how far are they from the the speakers they um they they hear a different kind of color of the chord because they are more closer to yeah certain notes than the others and then i realized that it's much more interesting if these speakers are moving themselves and then i realized okay so eight speaker eight performer but then i also added another variant which was that they were walking on um, metronomes in their ears one step on each metronome beat and i i gave them eight different uh, tempo which meant that it was a constant um, uh, constantly changing combination of distance between the performers and the audience and um, yeah it, you, as you will see it, it created a quite specific uh, shift in the dynamics of the space so now I play try to play it from here I need to check the code to see because I, yeah, I found some time codes I won't show you all the videos I'm gonna show two minutes of each around
So, so this was my first piece with with this form that I, yeah, became quite um, yeah specific to me, and yeah, and this piece uh, like. In the following piece, both the choreography and the dramaturgy is kind of evolving, but I started from this very simple, basically two-dimensional two choreography. It's just basically a line going up and down in different tempo. The, the notes were constant, uh, totally constant. Um, yeah, and there was no dramaturgical shift whatsoever. Um, and after this piece, creating, after this piece, I create, I, I made them. Um, a duo with a, a contemporary dancer called Alexandra Bay, but still in London, which was an, a very much an interactive piece, and which was a very good and very strong experience, and kind of combining this form of working with speakers and my experience of creating um, an interactive piece, which is very much based on the nonverbal communication and the uh, dynamics of a, a, a random group of audience. I created um, the next piece in 2016, which is called Mandala. And um, the Mandala is, uh, in, the, in this piece, it's only the, the audience is present and uh, performing the piece. And it starts very simply. I um, before the performance, I drew between 15 and 20 pathways on the performance floor, a circle, square, triangle, line. And all these shapes are intersecting each other. And um, each participant audience member uh, receives one speaker and one of the shapes. So, for example, a red circle. And the instruction is that you just follow this pathway, you can go any directions, any way you want, put your attention on the space, the sound, and feel free to play. And um, basically from this, a very complex, uh, very intense collective choreography appears each time, which is usually very playful and uh, People are, are get very much drawn into it, and I will show you a, a video of that. Should I say, or it's obvious that uh, you can have questions, or or here do you prefer that it's at the end? And, um, if people have questions, they can uh, can put them in maybe in the chat. Uh, so please feel free to if you have like. Instant uh, thoughts, feedback, comments. Um, can you can use the chat and um, and let's have a, a conversation after you have presented your work more. Okay. okay. Then I will go on. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna show two videos because I, I have one with a, like a from a bird's eye view, which is really uh, nice. And now I play the one.
so this was a short yeah sample and um now in, in this video there were a lot of children but it's it's really from yeah from six till 99 uh, in terms of the the, the year uh, years who were participating and it's i i played this piece in 12 countries but it's kind of having a quite universal effect so i, I haven't found any really difference in in how it works and it's almost starts that people just start to exploring and then after a while you get to know your pathway and then it's slowly then the details start to appear and little story starts to evolve between the participants and then you start to have some kind of feeling of what this shape gives to you and then you start to feel the sounds then the the people start to play together with the sounds and and creating like very resonant spaces um yeah and then it usually it's it's very important part of this piece that it's half an hour and then at the end we have a half an hour conversation where people can share their experiences and then it, it, it's a it, it's usually very beautiful of how people are experiencing differently these these nonverbal but very intense uh, interactions. Um, okay, and then next piece is called Drift, and this piece was created for the Prague Quadriennale uh, 2019, and there uh, my task for myself or my challenge myself was both to create a um, a dramaturgy that evolves and also to create some kind of spectacular part in it and um, from this it evolved in a way that um, so basically it starts from so it's basically was created to large public spaces and it starts from the most uh, sparse way so it's it's using the the whole space sorry i i forgot to say at the beginning that it's performed by 15 performers wearing 15 speakers yeah i took it as a <laughs> like obvious that it's again speakers and people are moving so it's 15 performers 15 speakers and then it starts from the using the larger space and the dramaturgy is consisting various like it's it's five parts with Kind of different tasks to do, but the dramaturgy is evolving towards a more and more condensed space till it gets to like really the closest possible, like everyone is gathering together at one point. Um, yeah, I show you the video and I talk a bit more about it. Uh,
and um, so the piece was um, the choreography was really based on um, my research on 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 public space walking and like with little tweaks how can it turn into choreographic material and how can it highlight or contrast the the existing movement on the on the public square and um yeah it's it's a really continuous realization from the people who are present in the in the square and they are not the audience that who knows that what's going to happen there from the beginning where it's it's really just something is happening but they cannot put their finger on it or what is going on and it slowly becomes more clear and clear while it, it really becomes a performance performance towards the end and it's very interesting and it was not actually not fully consciously intended that people join at the end and they they always join automatically it's really like a kind of five minutes uh five minutes long spiraling starts or circling first and then it starts to spiral and then it's like sucks the people in audience members and once a few start to join others want also join and it just always becomes this yeah 30 50 people bunch with the performance and the, the audience members and um so the last piece i want to show you is a is a video work and this video work was created um actually while i was researching for this piece the drift and i um made a, a 12 minutes or 15 minutes long uh, recording just put down a camera from a uh, a large angle with a large angle to the square and it was just a 15 minutes static recording and uh, i made this recording in my that that i had the idea in my head that i want to create this film that I, I made two years later which has the na narrative of that I won 2.5 mi million euros in a grant from a Swiss foundation because of my uh, amazing uh, uh, addition to the world of performance and I created this hyper realistic uh, 12 minutes or 15 minutes long uh, piece including 500 dancers and 40 assistant choreographers and and so on which was only performed once so this is the the narration which is obviously fake and so basically it's kind of a director's commentary on the piece that we see okay so we can see that mm. Itt el is érkeztünk a kezdéshez. Az első táncosok ezen a villamoson voltak. Pont úgy néznek ki, mint a járók elők. Igen, hát pont ez volt a cél. Elsőre úgy néz ki, mint hogyha egy sima villamos érkezett volna meg. De igazából azon már csak a szereplők voltak, akik az előző lezárt megállóban szálltak föl. Egy ilyen lendületes, dinamikus kezdést szerettünk volna az elejére. Aki ezután lép be a térre, azok már mind szereplők. Utána a metró megálló délnyugati sarka és a mozgó lépcső közti diagonálra helyeztük a fókuszt. Sára és Evelyn a két balettos kis lány dinamikus mozgásukkal gyakorlatilag kijelölték ezt a vonalat. Ezt utána a hangsúlyosan lassabb, fehér sapkás anyalánya karakter erősíti meg. Itt a jól érzékelhető tempókülönbség a játékos gyermekkor szabadságát, 
de ugyanakkor a szülőkkel való együttélés nehézségének kettőségét hivatott szimbolizálni. Most nézzünk balra. Itt egy nagyon erős, az előzőre majdnem merőleges erővonal alakul ki. Szinte mozdulatlanul. Roberto és Christian párosa gyakorlatilag egy ilyen urbánus western parafrázist alakít ki. Iszonyatos feszültséget tudnak együtt teremteni. Roberto aztán szuperül engedte el a pillanatot. Itt volt egy kis baki, mivel a síelőket játszó bolgár néptáncos lányok nem számítottak az igazoltatós jelenetre. Nem is volt benne az eredeti tervben, de majd erre később visszatérek és nem voltak annyira ügyesek az improvizációban, nem tértek le a kidolgozott útvonalukról. Kicsit lehet látni, hogy összezavarodnak. Én imádtam ezt a részt. Szerintem pont ezek a kis fennakadások adják meg az igazi erejét egy ilyenfajta munkának. Ha visszamegyünk, akkor látjuk Jacqueline-t. Mindjárt jön. Itt, itt van. Sokkal jobban megoldotta. Nézzük csak. Jó, amúgy 24 éves, francia táncos, és hihetetlen jól fel tudja venni az idős hölgy mozgását. Aztán itt jön Thomas, a német bútó táncos, bés ballon kabátban. Nagyon érződik, hogy milyen tréningből jött az ázsiai elmélyültség. Rengeteget dolgozott azon a folyamatosságon, ahogy a mozgása változik ezen a rövid úton. Nekem mindig nagyon megható volt látni, gyakorlatilag egy felgyorsított emberi dráma történik meg. Az elején nem... And so on and on. So it's... And it's really... It's the proof of... Basically, you take one busy public square, uh, square, you put out a camera for 15 minutes and then you can really narrate it in a way that it's a... It's a very precise choreography. And then there will be enough exciting characters like it, it, it might it should be maybe a, a series that i do it in different cities i just put a camera 15 minutes and then it, this was really unedited uh so it was and it was really one take so it, it was totally random okay so these were these were the four works that i wanted to talk about and um Yeah, uh, I think we can go to the walking part. Thank you for listening and watching. Shall I first uh, answer to the questions? Yes, Shall please start? do. So we can go to the questions that we have there and then start to talk uh, openly. So uh, feel free to address the questions that you find in the chat. Yes. What kind of feedback have you had from participants and audiences? You you asked this at the mandala piece, with the participatory piece? Um, yeah, it, it's just interesting to know how people responded to, say, like the, the first two pieces. And, well, just, just, just generally, because you said you talked to them afterwards, because uh, uh, I, I imagine the audiences were uh, random in the sense that they weren't invited. You know, they just happened to uh, be in that space when you staged the work. Is that right? The one, the participatory piece, it's 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 with the normal audiences, so people are coming there to experience this work. Ah, okay. And the, and the yeah. public space ones. They are the ones which which is like a combination of passers yeah. by and, and, yeah. and audiences. It just it, I I like the sense that um, by giving where where people were given speakers and given uh, a pathway, so you gave them people. I imagine I imagine that they felt a bigger freedom to be able to actually participate physically because that's that's there's that's quite difficult for people to do and so 
and then they really seemed to enjoy it and then they started to really express themselves which was lovely to see yeah i think there are several factors that makes it quite very easy to participate in it's that the the actual task is is very easy and then if you are kind of not watched by 200 person you are okay with walking on a line and then things starts to appear for you what is what does it mean to walk in a line also to be able to like to get a tool which is the speaker which also has some kind of force in it because it has a, a resonant sound it also helps because you know sometimes it's difficult to do like you are not naked basically you have something that actually has some power and then you can hold it in your hand so you also have elements, some think, yeah. you also have maybe some authorship within the piece you're participating in which you is... also have authorship and then you also have all the freedom of choice how to relate in what what hap what happens so basically you can also decide to stay in a part of the shape which is more more on the periphery or you can choose to block people or you can choose to meet people or you can choose to to make a kind of friendship with one person and start to interact with them but usually also people are always getting bored of one task and changing to the other and the, the complexity grows out of this and also there is a lot of um copying as well so it's ah. first people start to walk slowly and then someone gets bored so start to walk quickly or start to do something and then it gives the 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 uh, option for others to also to do that and then um in terms of what they experience it really from playfulness to spiritual experience to it's it's very common that they see it metaphorically of 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 life basically of meeting people at certain points being alone in other points having walking this very repetitive shapes in our life like the triangle is like the classic one of also from the giddy board like this shopping working home what does it mean if it's you just walk a line up and down if it's going to be really boring or what what do you find in this one line one straight line um yeah so it's 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 a very yeah, beautiful thing that they experience yeah. let's say thank you i love the simplicity that creates this complexity it's lovely yeah thank you uh, I have a second. What kind of speakers did you give the audience in the shape piece? I mean, I'm using uh, the British speakers. <laughs> uh, it's a question of the of the brand, or um, or or how like the technical aspect a bit more. I guess it's a question really about the kind of compromise. Oh, am I still muted? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I do hear. Okay, you. <laughs> it's telling me I'm muted, but I'm actually not. Um, yeah, it's just a practical nerdy question, really, because I'm planning something which also uses performers carrying speakers and finding the compromise between getting a really great sound, but but giving people speakers that might be dropped or, you know, have to be portable enough to be carried. I guess that's sort of the question, really, of how did you make that decision and what did you end up with? Yeah, I can suggest you these mini rig speakers. It's from England. It's really good quality very sturdy the only one which got broke it was when i took one on a like a canoeing the, a day canoeing and we went into the water and then yeah so basically i killed the only one which <laughs> has died otherwise audiences were fine with it it's, I, I put it in that uh, here it's a very good speaker and I'm using uh, MP3 players attached to them. Oh, I see. Right. Okay. Uh, Babak is supporting me in her question. My question is, my question in the first piece, you talked about sit, setting different tempo with the metronome. Yeah, I'm coming from cage. 
Shall I read it loud or everyone is reading the same? Well, maybe uh, Bob, because that's Bob's question, right? Yeah. Maybe Bob okay. can just uh, convey the question. I've got three questions. The first one relates to the first piece, and the, uh, the, the, the second and third, the third and fourth pieces. They're technical questions. I don't know if, you, if, if they're of any interest, but they're ones I've got a vital interest in. I can say them roughly, if you like. Do you want me to do that? Yes, Take it one. Okay, roughly, I'm coming from indeterminacy, Cage and Martha Graham, and using synchronicity. So my obvious first question is, when you said you set um, tempi in relation to metronome, were they unrelated um, tempi, or were they like divisible tempi, i.e. one was twice the other? By the looks of things, they were unrelated. If they are unrelated, then synchronicity can cut in. If they're related, there's no possibility for synchronicity. And, and the point of synchronicity is, is the constant is when they all collide, like in a Martha Graham thing, there's a syncretic moment when all the unrelated rhythms come together. This is the, the, the first question on the first piece. The one on the second piece, again, I, d I don't know, this, this is, you know, personally from my own point of view, the, 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 the one with the square and the space. Now, presumably you're using a sort of a, a shallow space about five foot tall, or five foot six, the height of a, a person. So you've got a, a shallow space determined. My, the application of, of this in my training was in terms of a two-dimensional, sort of 12 foot by 12 foot. And you had basically unrelated shapes that you got, if, just to cut it short from a model, uh, and, and, and uh, five different shapes, five different colors, five different sizes. And you just put them out of five different rhythms and it justified a whole um, picture plane. What I'm seeing you're doing is bringing something not dissimilar. I mean, there might be some elements of it, which was activating or articulating the shallow space of the physical space of the um, of, uh, of the square. And then the third, the fourth. Cause I started with Strasbourg. I started uh, method acting. So there's an element which is absolutely not Gutrovsky. It's absolutely, you know, part the opposite of that. So it's not using any. Um, so when you introduce a psychological element in the fourth one, i.e., uh, I can't remember, you, anyhow, you bring in a psychological dimension, i.e., you've got little narratives for the different characters. Now, that's taking it beyond. So it's, I, you could say in terms of acting, that's, or Stanislavski, that's bringing in a color. So you're bringing in a color it, within this shallow space that you've determined. So they're just, they're, they're, they're just, I mean, that's what I've been consciously working with for the last 50 years and articulating that. I'm just wondering where that lays in relation to your practice and how much, I mean, you, uh, in, 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 with, with, with Cage and Martha Graham, there's a, a constant uh, against which, uh, it's a Jungian term, basically, and it's a constant which you can gauge. I'm just wondering what is the constant against which you can gauge, i.e. within, i.e. the literal space or the two-dimensional space? And in terms of your intentions and how they relate to the way that it's played out and how you record that, all that is just a very general sort of question. I mean, I was coming in with much more specific ones, but have you got a sort of general overview of, of that sort of area of, uh, uh, of perception and the way that it plays upon that aspect, that aspect of performance art? It was a quite a dense question. <laughs> um, yeah, so I kind of try to answer them in. in yeah, in a collected or a general way. Like your first, obviously I'm very much aware of uh, like the, the Cage, Martha Graham's practice, and it was a very strong inspiration at, the, at those times. Um, but for me, in terms of also the, 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 the distribution of the shapes and also the, this metronome, uh, like if it's, I said undivisible or they are divisible. They are um, unrelated not or divisible. Unrelated or if they are unrelated, Unrela yeah. that's not part the unrelated. It's basically they are unrelated. Yeah, are they I'm not, deliberately unrelated? Or, I'm not or, hyper. Yes, yeah, so I'm not interested in um, to really work with such a. a a precision in terms of composition. I'm only interested that gives in something that gives the experience. I'm not interested in the in the in the background of it. So if it's 
it's it's obviously that there it it wasn't possible that it's not perceivable if they step together like there there is this point of collision then after that i I'm, I'm not yeah i won't make like these big calculations of of different uh, tempi i just choose them in terms of kind of general speed so it was kind of from super slow to a bit fast walking and what gives this feeling that's that's good enough for me it's the same with the shapes they don't it's not like mathematically or very precisely drawn it's quite relative i'm only concerned that they they kind of equally distributed in the space and yeah like kind of most people meets with most people and at the beginning i was making these maps for myself and i was drawing them out but now i just go there and i'm just doing it yeah so I, do you mind if i ask one more question do you mind yeah. if i ask one more question uh, I'll, I'll stop then okay there's two perspectives and um what's okay larry bell the Californian artist asked it and he pointed it out. You've got like the East Coast artists who ask the metaphysical question, why, like Pont, Johns and uh, Rauschenberg, or you've got the uh, West Coast artists who ask the metaphysical how. Uh, what I'm, I'm saying is I'm, I'm just giving a methodology, uh, a methodological how to do it, you know, how it's achieved. And then once you've established that, whatever happens, you know, it happens sort of thing. I'm hearing you as being more on the, your, your interest isn't so much in the how as the why, i.e. the implications. When you, you generally, you, you roughly set it in place and something happens and you're interested in, 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 you know, you've got enough going on to make something happen. So it's like more to do not with the how you get it, but the effect of that. And, and, and so you'll be more sort of in, in a context more East Coast than you would be West Coast sort of thing. That's all. Yeah. I mean, again, I, I, it's not a, a fair metaphor to use an American one in this case, but they're just my terms of reference. That's all. Yeah. I don't. You know, we might just overlap a little bit. I don't know. That's all. We might not. I mean, it might just be rubbish that I'm talking in relation to what you're saying. I'm yeah, and I to... also agree with what you said that uh, giving these little narratives to this walking, it it, it gives a color. Um, in terms of the linearity of my practice, it's kind of a a little fun side project and it's also for me i'm kind of you have, you have to also see that i'm kind of not like a very unique position in 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 hungary but but it's not like that it's so very common to people to like very uh, consistently working with these topics and i found it to give a different aspect of it it's just like um an interesting addition to this kind of work and it, it might be a, an interesting addition to a, a, a conversation that it's building now in Hungary or Central Europe or, or, or whatever. Oh, well done. Congratulations. Keep it going, man. <laughs> okay, next one. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Are you designing your work in such a way that it can be reproduced without requiring your presence? Uh, yes. It's a short answer. Can you give examples of this? Has it has your work been reproduced without uh, you being present? Only once. Like I, I was um, <clears throat> creating in a kind of post-industrial factory complex, which is like half abandoned, half alive. Um, an experimental bike ride, which was very much resembling on, on kind of a stalkerish situation that I was leading um, basically two audience members through this industrial complex for half an hour, which also led to this big drone music and uh, which was derived from um, the sounds of the ventilation of a, a factory or some kind of power plant. And um, I was quite precise on, on like the, the, the pass that we took, it was very precise. Also like the tempos and various parts were very precisely and repetitively done. And then there were times that it was, I taught people how to do it beforehand and because I was not in the country when 
it was supposed to play and then they they done it without me but not uh, mandala i would right i would be okay but it's also like i would need to know that person like that someone has to hold that space well it's not that right. just I'm, I'm sending the the, the instructions, instructions. Um, the reason also why I'm asking is um, um, because the work that you have, uh, the first three pieces that you've shown, so not the last one where you narrate uh, the choreography, because I, I would argue that's quite a different kind of piece, right? The first three are all about uh, consuming audio in public space uh, and really also super pos positing uh, individual uh, uh, tracks um, dynamically. Um, uh, but you are approaching this from um, a very uh, analog or practical direction. Uh, if it was me, I would actually come from come, come at it from the opposite side, as in I would come at it from a very digital perspective. But that's probably because our backgrounds are very different. Uh, my uh, art form, if you will, is writing code. Uh, I am a developer, if you will, or I write uh, applications. So I would construct a situa situations like what, you're, um, uh, what you showed us by creating software or by using software to enact these situations. And then typically, if I would want to superimpose audio, the software that I would use probably would be Echoes, uh, which is a, a piece of software, a platform, uh, where you can layer uh, pieces of audio tied to locations and consumers or, or performers uh, can create the performer performance by using this app on their phone and by going into public space, right? Perhaps with a set of instructions uh, or not, right? Um, but the consequence would be similar. But by design, this would not require me to be present because the, the, the work is the software, if you will. Uh, but for you, that is, it's the opposite, or at least you need, you are present to create the work. And I think you're saying that you're doing this um, deliberately. This is uh, by design. You want it to be like this. Yeah, but it's also, yeah, like I think now it's, it's the question has two parts, but it's also, I mean, it, it's like, like these, um, like for example, this drift, the, 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 the choreography, choreography for the, with, with the 15, performers that I kind of have to choreograph each time for uh, for two days for for 15 new performers and there are loads of details that has to be taken care of and the, the precision the timing so in, in this sense it's it's not a generative piece it's it's not that something that I can send with the instructions because it would be a different piece and if I would do it in if I'm doing it New sites, I, I'm really, yeah, creating to that space or like shape, reshaping to that space. So in this sense, with that one, I, I'm really necessary. Um, in terms of like using more digital or more generative um, sources or more analog, I think I'm, I want to control these experiences more then then it, it would come with the generative way so this is yeah I, what what you said it was totally true like i could do it on on boom boxes with cassettes it's basically it's it's very old school the, te the technology or how i i'm using it is just smaller and and neater but it's it's yeah deliberately i, I use this approach thanks okay Next one. Pa pa pa. So the subplot was only described to last piece. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Adam, was the only rule that the participants were able to ignore all rules and reconfigure habitual patterns of movement in public space? Whether intentionally or unintentionally, is Adam. Um, which piece did you mean? I think he's talking about Mandala. 
yeah, it's it's usually not in public space. And um, and it was not um, said that they can uh, ignore all the rules, but um, they often do, and this often becomes a a discussion. Like some people get really angry. Some people think that if they haven't ignored the rules or or broke some of the rules that actually they wanted or they they didn't. Um, yeah, so they didn't dare, and some people just just deliberately were breaking the rules. And um, I think your question also includes, I ah, yes, because I didn't read the question. So, okay, so the question was, was the only rule that the participants were able to ignore all rules and reconfigure habitual patterns of movement in public space, whether intentionally or unintentionally? I think this, the mandala, it's not dealing very much of this public space uh, walking or habits. It can remind people to that, but I think it's much more personal and um, interpersonal what happens there rather than it, it resembles something that of uh, public space walking. What comes first, the music or the structure of the performance? Is it different on every piece? So most of the time when I'm creating a new piece that I kind of totally envision the whole piece all together beforehand. So I kind of just making the details when I start to make it. Like from, for example, with this mandala, it was like I had a flash of idea and basically the concept was what you saw here. And I, I just had to refine the details and like how it works the best. And of course there were like years of like really refining the instructions, really refining the way I introduce, really refining the technicalities, the lengths, the format. Um, and basically I'm using this kind of drone music because I think it's, I'm kind of aiming to this very neut neutral, beautiful nature, like, but very resonant and very, uh, yeah, very resonant kind of sound music or music from its music. Um, but it's also very functional. So if, if you are in, it's, it doesn't come through the laptop, but it's a, if you are within like this 15, 20 speakers, it's a very strong, actually bodily experience. I have a, another question about the uh, mandala, uh, David. Uh, yes. You uh, al also um, enacted the piece uh, at some point in nature, in a park, in a forest somewhere. Um, now, the, the registration that we saw here at the start uh, of this 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 cafe, um, the physical space uh, in both cases, with the with the aerial video and the video that was in, that was shot in Burgas in the swimming pool. Um, the physical space was almo almost not completely, but much less consequential. What mattered was it seemed that it was a flat space and that people would be able to move on the space in the shapes that you had drawn on the ground. But the video registration of the one that you set in the forest, it's more interpretive, so it's hard to see or hard to deduce from the video. Uh, it, but it seems that the space plays an important role in uh, how the participants create and consume the work. Can you say a little bit about this maybe? Yeah, it's it's true. What you said, like, even if it's like in this grass parky way when you, with the bird's eye view or it's in this like a swimming pool, it was like a, a, a dried out swimming pool or it's quite often in theater space, it's it's very similar and it doesn't affect so much the performance. And this forest version is the only one which is, is really different in a sense that um, it's somehow it's 
it it's really creates a connection between the sounds, the people, and the nature. And um, yeah, like some people said this, and it's even funny, like that they never had such a a strong attention to the to the forest. That they are often hiking, but like they never felt like so connected with the with the actual trees and with the actual plants and the environment. And um, in in terms of that, it's it's less the focus is less on the on of the human interaction. It's kind of these these layers are are, are more mixed. Uh, David, uh, I would like to come back on, on the geometrical uh, of your mandala performances in particular. I um, had to very very strongly think about, about Beckett's uh, performances, uh, the quads and, and other performances, which involve as well a very repetitive um, musical score um, and um, and actually are, are, are about it. Uh, the, the senselessness of, of movements and um, the repetitiveness as, as, as going nowhere. Um, but uh, the movements that, that your, um, uh, your performance make have this sort of, maybe in a more playful manner, uh, the showing the theater of life where uh, the theater and a sort of absurd theater where people move going nowhere and uh, moving uh, without any, any goal. Um, so um, did you, did, did you feel a like sort of affinity with what Beckett did um, uh, with his walking uh, theater? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I like that work a lot. Yeah, I, I've, yeah, I got to see that after I, I, I conceived the, the idea. Um, but I, I don't see it very much related in in its real core. Like I, for me, this Beckett piece, it's it's something very abstract or kind of Dadaist, very beautiful work. And um, this piece is, I think, much more about togetherness and kind of more of a, of a really felt uh, spiritual togetherness or, or what connection through, through nonverbal communication rather than any real abstraction so in this sense i think the core it's 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 not similar the form is 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 similar and i think for also for the viewer because there are some there are variations where people can uh, swap between the roles and then they can watch it from outside and then they can go in and, and change and in this sense for the the audience is it's the the experience is kind of similar than for the performance that they are watching it like as a a little play of life or something like that not a, not not like as an abstract piece that people are just going anywhere and nowhere got another question it's a sort of follow up it's um, i hear you saying about your practice that it's this is what i hear you i hear you say it's innovatory rather than widespread practice in hungary so pretty much anything you do uh, in this area w w uh, of itself will open up new creative vistas and, and, and possibilities in the sense that you've got an open book you can pretty much do anything you want because it's it's an un uncharted area at present in Hungary, it's, it's, it's it, you know, you're, if you see what I mean, is that true or? Yeah, in terms of, like, there are some, there, no, there are site specific works going on and there are public space works going on, but a very few people are working with, um, like in this social dynamics aspect of, of working in in uh, public space, which is actually so much more. Breaking, you're breaking new ground in a sense. Yeah, breaking new ground might be a bit too strong word, but yeah, I kind of um, I think more the constant uh, constancy of what I'm doing that kind of creates um, that that able to give to the discussion or or yeah add to the discussion. What you mean the integrity of what you're doing? Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, and the constant, 
constantly that this, this is this is a this can be a thing that we walk with speakers and then on the street and the dynamics of the space is changing like this mm -hmm. this can be something that it's not very common yeah or it's it's something that it's it's coming up lately i.e. the simple idea of automatism i.e. you know that sort of thing. yeah but but i found like obviously I, I know quite a lot of the works from other places in the world and then it's yeah obviously it's not such a new thing yeah maybe the the form how i'm doing it it's yeah it's it's not a most common form <laughs> Not wanting to steal your thunder, uh, David, uh, but Beres did throw in uh, her tuppence in the chat. Uh, can you, Beres, maybe say a few things about what you do uh, in uh, perform uh, in relation to performance in public space? Because you're also based in Hungary. Yeah, I mean, I definitely don't want to steal this talk. I'm just, I just think it's like a really uh, interesting. Um, aspect of performance when when it happens in public because of the really different like overt and and sort of implicit like power structures of space and ownership and stuff like that like it's not this sort of like blank gallery performance space that's like an empty uh slate but but it like you're kind of creating into an already very loaded space which i find exciting i mostly focus on gender and queerness and sexuality and also like social topics like homelessness and stuff like that but yeah i think it's i think it's really exciting and and uh, very needed um in this current social and political climate it, it it's i think it's a good way to to um stir the dialogue um that's going on in public space yeah Do you uh, ever um, uh, experience aggression, particularly if you address political topics uh, in today's Hungary uh, that could uh, um, yeah, create a backlash? And the same goes for David. Uh, I don't know how political you consider your own work or uh, how, other, how, how political other people consider your work, but it's in public space. So do you ever uh, experience a backlash? I mean, I, I definitely do, but I think my like pieces the ones that i made recently are much more like explicit um than david um but i i don't like i think it's it's part of 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 what i do and i don't mind it because i do think it's the start of a dialogue most of the time and i'm also like kind of knowingly putting my body into it but i also it was so nice because i was in drift and uh, that's like a really different um way of of being present in public space than how i do my own performances because like i usually make statements versus drift is less of like a clear statement for me it's much more about like being present um like somatically and and that was also really really nice experience for me you say you were David, more explicit. Oh, could you be explicit about your explicitness sorry um, Beres, you say your work is more explicit in a sense than David's. Could you be more explicit about your explicitness so we can savour a little bit of what it is that you do in your performance? And because I, I can then judge it, that against, you know, contemporary so, uh, society in Hungary and a certain there's an overdue, a residue of, of, of conformity and, and, and expectation that possibly isn't in like England or America right now, that sort of thing. It's, David, I don't want to steal your your discussion. No, no, no. No, this is for, I think for a discussion. No, it's not just discussing my work. Yes, okay. please go for that. Yeah. No, no, no. Go okay. on. Well, yeah. So um, I don't know. I mean, like it seems like I've been doing this for decades, but I definitely haven't. Like um, so like my last uh, I'm trying to summarize. So my last two pieces, the last one was like a fundraiser for like a, an NGO that supports homeless people. And I basically did a duration of performance. That's like three hours. It's mostly like a, I called it like a contact improvisation with a bed. So there's a bed in the same square that you just saw. And I was like uh, dancing and, and just also existing in it and, and, and people could donate money. And there was like a lot of different reactions. Um, very like 
on, on the on everywhere on the scale from extremely negative and aggressive from extremely supportive. Uh, but anyway, and then the the other one that I think is relevant to mention here was it's like a play a word play on made uh, like maiden and basically it was like um, like this like a uh, twist on a folklore dress uh, but it was decorated with emojis and symbols of of like uh, like gender and and sexual orientation and stuff like this headpiece and then there were also like slurs and sort of compliments usually given to women embroidered on my dress and i had this big paper skirt so people could decorate it and basically i was interacting with people either in a hyper feminine or hyper masculine way and i also had like a a range of <laughs> a huge range of of uh, reactions and uh, yeah that's that's what I can mention I think now somewhat related I have another question for you, David um because what we've now seen from your work is really what I would argue is one of your three personas as an artist uh with the other two uh um, if I may uh, classify, if you would allow me to classify it as such uh, being more about uh, maybe site-specific performance art, but with you as the performer, but you're also a musician, right? Uh, what what kind of topics do you address uh, as a musician with your with the, the CDs or the albums that you've created? That's a that's a quite interesting question. I mean, at the moment I have one main. Uh, band, which is playing kind of um, very inspired from spiritual practices and Middle Eastern and, and Buddhist kind of practices in a kind of punk rock context or punk, punk rock sound. It's a very intense, very raving and very kind of community. It, it, the music and the concerts have a very strong community feeling, which people very much enjoy. And actually, in one of the videos, we are using a group dance, which was kind of uh, inspired by this um, Sufi Zikr, zikr uh, rituals. You, you, you've heard this Zikr? No. It's kind of, a, it's kind of running uh, in a circle. And then it, there, there are a certain variations. Um, and it has a lot of moments when, when like it's really repetitive or like time really stops, which is kind of very much related to this drone music that I'm also using in my pieces. So in terms of, of the experience of, um, of the concerts of these bands, it's, uh, it's very much connected to this the experience of these pieces just in a very different form in the, in the, like a band is playing and it sounds like you've got concept. more potential sorry it sounds like you've got more potential for subversion when you go into a, 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 a into a group situation that's what i hear you saying is that true yeah, yeah i guess so. um so but for me music is it's something that i yeah I play for the joy of myself and for the others. It's I, I don't consider it my uh, profession anymore. But uh, it's interesting that um, like the new project I'm, I'm preparing, my one of my other favorite type of music is African music. I'm really like very deeply fond of African music and I, I play it for quite a while. I, I also played with the Africans in London. And in that, in a, in a other way, it's this, with this repetition and like the kind of annihilation of time, it, it also exists. So it's kind of, I guess, with this eternal or like, yeah, eternal repetition, it's, it's something that, that it's, it's, I'm very much drawn to. You've mentioned spirituality two or three times. What role does spirituality uh serve in the body of your work is it central or just comes in and goes out i mean um i guess it, it it's quite very much there in terms of 
attention and the feeling of togetherness or or oneness in one way or another and um yeah people are mentioning this from time to time uh after these talks of mandala that they 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 felt this togetherness or like oneness which is very much um also connected to spirituality or, or the experience of spirituality and of course like the mandala is a, is a buddhist uh, reference which is um yeah i think it might be not the best title but still is the best title somehow i cannot imagine it to be called anything else um yeah and then obviously it brings in or like having this resonance together with the, the piece Uh, but, um, David, uh, you're using, um, let's say, uh, the, the workers as carriers of sound in, by giving them, them speakers. And um, I see as well Mary's, uh, um, let's say, observation about um, uh, walking mazes uh, where people were meditating while chanting uh, uh, and moving into mazes. Did you ever um, consider um, not to use a technological carrier of sound, but, but um, to use the voice in, in, in your um, performances? Yeah, the voice is interesting. It's, because the voice is, I think it's a difficult one. That's a, that's a huge block for many people. For It's, it's less and less for me now, but it, it was for me as well. Um, yeah, maybe in the future I, I might use it. Uh, once I was using, I mean, it was more like more of a, a one-off performance during this uh, Walking Budapest series when, when uh, after the first lockdown, we, artists were asked to do short or like a few hours pieces, one after each other which is based on walking in the city. And I was doing this piece called the uh, ringing when I was basically it was doing this slow walk and I was just ringing with small bells and I had like a dozen with me and people can join. And it was like this little procession walking through the city, ringing the, the bells. So it was, that was a very simple and, and very obviously uh, a piece with a lot of like this religious connotation or like, yeah, associations. Yeah. It, uh, it was all mentioned before, but but what I think is a very interesting um, uh, added uh, value of your work is that the conversation that is following on performing together, uh, the, the performing together, um, the, the public is actually the, the, the performer. Uh, but is also invited in um, in meeting each other uh, beyond um, uh, performing together, but also in, in talking with each other and sharing their their experiences. Um, and, uh, is this um, um, how do people um, get, uh, interact with each other in these conversations? Man? I mean, it's usually very like they laugh a lot because it's just. Like experiencing something together in, in, in these interactions where we don't know what the other thinks. But we have a connection and then to verbalize it and then like to, to see the perspective of the different perspective and how people see it, the same thing. It's, it's somehow it's always like utterly funny and um, very joyful and very human. It's also very human. And people enjoy that a lot. Um, yeah, and I, I, I feel, I mean, I, I truly believe that people like really, really need this communal experiences, which, which, are, which are without uh, talking, but just really be experiencing something together in the space. This is, and there's so little space for this, so rare that I think it's it's um, yeah it's kind of a uh, that's my mission. Yeah, 
Yes, when you say you, uh, when you experience something together, I would want to know what, how that plays out in relation to consciousness. I, is there an existential element that makes you actually, if not physically do something, deliberately think something? And if you deliberately think something, is there a process of sharing that thought? I mean, out of the specificity of the coming together moment. Can you rephrase this question? I'm not, I didn't fully understand. When you, you, you said when you, because you said a lot of the spiritual element in your work is the experience of coming together, i.e. a group experience. So I'm just wondering how that then relates to consciousness, i.e. is there an existential element, i.e. A, a moment of uh, 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 where you, you, you separate yourself from being together with people and you start thinking, like, I've got a whole bunch of people here and isn't this great to have them talking? Let's do something with it, i.e. Um, share a thought that maybe is outrageous or fun or whatever, or actually do something out of the moment, not out of, um, uh, you know, the way you, out of the actual moment that you've, you've shared together. Is there something born, i.e. in terms of action, out of that? I mean, that, I'm just asking, Is you know, it's great to have a spiritual moment. I mean, what I are just, you doing with it? That's the question. That's the question, what are we doing with it? Do, uh, yeah, do you? I mean, has it ever got that far that as a consequence you've done something out of this sharing experience and it's like as a group activity, i.e. we'll go, you know, like in XR, we'll go around and paint all the buildings blue or something, you know, or throw, throw oil on, 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 on somebody or take all our clothes off and make a gesture as a political statement, i.e. there's a sort of courage possibly that happens as a consequence of of coming together. And yeah, I mean, how I see these experiences or like the effect of, or what can be, yeah, how can it make a change if you want to rephrase it? Mm. It's more like, um, like there is this, uh, maybe you've heard of Andrew Ferdmar, he's this kind of bit yeah. experimental Hungarian psychologist living in Canada, and then he's, um, um, working a lot with with uh, like a psychoactive drugs with uh, people with severe depression and PTSD, mm -hmm. and he says that um, basically it's it do, it doesn't do much more than showing them a glimpse of like ah okay this feeling of togetherness if, if they are using MDMA this feeling of togetherness exist and possible and it's possible to get there mm -hmm. and for me i guess what my work can do is you know give these little things like ah okay this experience exists or we can feel like this, this together and then it might create a longing for more of this experience and then it can then it in the in some yeah, in the people's life, it can be like these inspirations that are like, okay, I want to experience this more. I, I need to find a way and then they do whatever they want to do with it. But we, it's, it's, we, won't, we won't go for any further. <laughs> All right. Oh, so it hasn't yet happened. You haven't taken it to the, you no. haven't got into the... I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know because it's <laughs> about each individual. Okay. We have some more people with us uh, that didn't ask anything or that didn't uh, share the share the uh, feedback or comment yet. If you feel like, uh, take your chance. What if anybody else wants to add something uh, to this uh, conversation? Um, do you have? Um any sort of ideas of maybe uh, developing out of the, the pieces you've done so far? Uh, sort of, are there sort of future developments, you know, in terms of uh, the performative element, the drama? And what I'm getting from what you're saying, which is, is that being present and not giving it to someone else a set of instructions is because 
you're a vital component in in conducting this event and um, it's not not it as in a sort of control freak way but but that kind of but mediating and facilitating a, a situation in a like, like you say in a dramatic sort of way but it's like a piece of theater that you've set the stage and created the structure and then people then create a piece of work which is a I, I really love that way of working. I try and do that myself. But do you have any sort of um, plans for sort of developing the format in, in different ways or different situations? Yeah, I, I, I don't really understand the question. I mean, I understood. <laughs> I, I was just interested you know, on kind of if you've thought, Where will it go? okay, I can take maybe this is, I can take this into this route. It's a silly question, really. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, one important thing with my work or how I see it going on, that for me it's very important that these works, I, I, I keep on playing them. So it, I, I really believe that these works are not something that's going to expire, or at least not very soon. And for me, like, it's, it's, a, it's a totally whole new different topic of this, kind of capitalist producing of, of new art pieces, like in many festivals, it's a recommendation that it's the maximum two years old, the piece should be. And then it's, it's like really like you have to produce, produce, produce new work. And then I'm really want to challenge this and like really pushing this work to be played as much as it possible. Uh, and Basically, how I work, it's always just going from one step further from before. So I have like different other projects as well. And I have several plans, of course, because I, I like to play. So I'm going to make new pieces. But um, and but it's, uh, it's always somehow the movement of sound embodies in space. Like one new bigger project I'm uh, planning to make, it's kind of to create a really large sound installation with uh, 15, 20 kind of sound poles in, a, in a, a big plain or desert area. And the people can have like this really getting lost in this, in the horizon and just walking around in the sound installation. A few things are happening, but really going into the horizon and having this kind of mingling around in a, in a, like a few square kilometers and and i'm going to use a, a lot of elements which are uh, from the instructions from the mood that i used before but it's it's gonna be a, a i changed the knob yeah one further but most of my new ideas are you're gonna recognize it if you and the next cafe in five years. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I guess I'm a, it was kind of wasn't really a question, really. It was a sort of, yeah, uh, just trying to imagine your kind of, I suppose, the, the progression of the idea, keeping the central format, but sort of adding layers and just changing situation. But yeah, yeah. Lovely. That, that's how it's, you know. We are like uh, one hour and a half in our interaction, in our drift of ideas and yes. in our mandala of uh, visions. Um, uh, this um, uh, Cordula or Eva, uh, who are, uh, has joined you us, do you want to add something? Do you have any feedback or comment uh, to share? Uh, we may go to an, maybe a last or one of the last uh, questions. It's a feature length, mm -hmm. length uh, movie now. <laughs> Starting at eight. <laughs> Anybody feeling like having the last question?
Yeah. Are you are you coming to the UK to do a piece of work? <laughs> yeah, I mean, since I, it's really an island. Since I moved out of the UK, it's like I don't see any, or or it's it's quite rare that I see opportunities going over there. But I I think I I'm gonna try. But if you have any ideas or suggestions of festivals, I'm Currently in a time when I'm uh, I'm planning to apply to several places, but I haven't been back since I moved out of London <laughs> to the sunny, sunny Great Britain. So then it uh, leaves me uh, to to thank you all uh, for being here, and uh, David for uh, uh, inviting us to. To talk with you. Yes. Um, Thank you very much for the invitation. It was a joy. Thank you. Yes. Honor. Thank you. It was uh, delightful and very interesting. Inspiring. Yes. Thanks, David. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye. 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 bye.